I mentioned in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some common ways that a derivative can fail to exist. And there are three common ways we're going to take a look at. One is if there's a sudden change in the behavior of the function. And that's going to generally mean that there's a corner or a cusp in the graph. So if I have something like the absolute value function, there's a corner. There's where two line segments meet. Okay. If I have two curves that meet at a sharp point, we call that a cusp. With either of these, the derivative doesn't exist because if I were try to, to try to take the limit of the slopes of secant lines at this point, I can see if I choose a point coming in from the left, I'm getting negative slopes. If I choose a point from the right, I'm getting positive slopes. And they're not leveling off, so they're not going to meet in the middle at zero. Same thing's happening over here with this cusp. Mm -hmm. Another thing that can happen is that the function isn't continuous at A. So in the last video, we saw a theorem that if a function is differentiable, it's got to be continuous. That means if it's not continuous, there's no way it can possibly be differentiable. Okay. So if I have a situation where I've got maybe a jump discontinuity, or maybe even just a hole in the graph, even if there's a point somewhere else, the derivative is not going to exist here. Remember, with the derivative, I'm looking for the limit of the slope of secant lines. If I choose this point and a point to the left, my secant line is going to be fairly steep and negative. If I choose a point to the right, I'm getting a secant line that's almost flat. They're not approaching the same slope. Here, I would have to use this point, not the hole, in creating my secant lines. And so you can see, there's no nice pattern to the secant lines. When I move from being a point to the left to a point to the right of this point right here, there's a sudden change that the slopes jump from being positive to being negative. Okay. There's a third common way that a derivative function can fail to be differentiable. And this one I think is kind of interesting. Because for this third way, the tangent line exists. It just doesn't have a slope. And since the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, if the tangent line doesn't have a slope, the function is not differentiable. So what sorts of lines don't have slope? There's only one sort of line that doesn't have a slope, and that's a vertical line. So if I have a vertical tangent at a point, because the graph gets infinitely steep, just for an instant, can't stay vertical or it would fail the vertical line test and not be a function. But if just instantaneously it's infinitely steep, I would have a vertical tangent and the function is not differentiable there. Now, this happens fairly commonly when we're looking at roots. So I mentioned that in this video, we were going to be taking a look at the square root function. So if f of x is the square root function, I know that looks something like this. It starts at the origin, and it's increasing, but it's getting less steep as we go. So the derivative, I can see, we're always increasing, so the derivative is always going to be positive. And we start out steeper and we get less steep. So the derivative could look like one of two things. Could look something like so, or it could look something like so. And it all depends on how steep is it right at that one initial starting point. This would be if the tangent line still actually has a positive slope. It's just a very big positive number. And then as we move to the right, it gets less steep. This would be if the graph is so steep as we approach the origin that the tangent line is actually that vertical line, the y-axis. Now, by looking at the picture, I can't tell which of these is correct. Because, first of all, my picture isn't drawn perfectly to scale. But even if it were, my eye isn't accurate enough to be able to tell the difference between something that's really, really steep with a slope of 20 trillion 
and something that's infinitely steep with no slope, with an undefined slope. So we're going to have to use some algebra. And because I'm looking for the derivative at this point, and it's the end point of the domain, I mentioned we have to adjust the definition of the derivative to use a one-sided limit, if that's the case. So I'm not going to just find the derivative function and then try to plug in zero. I'm going to try to find the derivative at this point, zero, zero. So I would choose a nearby point. Since we're working with a specific point here, I can call my second point just x root x, and then I can draw in that secant line. And f prime of 0 is going to equal, if it exists, it would be the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Because I can't come in from the left because there aren't any points over here. Rise over run would just be root x minus 0 over x minus 0. So that's the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of root x over x. I could rationalize this, multiplying by 1 in the form of root x over root x. That's the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x over x root x. And I can cancel an x. So I'm going to get the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over root x. Some of you might have felt comfortable going right from here to here, just recognizing that x, since it's a positive number in this case, is the same thing as just two factors of root x, and then one of them cancels. Now, if I look here, the bottom goes to 0, but the top goes to 1. So I know this thing is getting big. It's going off to plus or minus infinity, and I just do my sign check. If the top is close to 1, it's positive. The bottom is positive, because square roots are never negative, and x is representing a positive number. So this would be positive infinity. So that's what the limit is. But the derivative is supposed to be the slope of a tangent line. And that's not an allowable slope. So I have a vertical tangent, but I would have to say f prime of 0 does not exist. When we're talking about derivatives as limits, it only counts as the derivative if the limit is a finite number. So while I can take the limit and I get infinity, I don't say, oh, the derivative is infinity. I say the derivative doesn't exist. By definition, the derivative must be a slope, and slopes are numbers. <laughs> so this function actually, I now know when I draw it, I should make sure that I'm drawing it really, really steep at 0, because it actually has a vertical tangent there. 